Big things come in small packages, especially when you've got a super mushroom handy. But how did these Brooklyn brothers become the heroes of Toads and New Yorkers alike? Here's the ending of the Super Mario Bros. movie explained. Mario and Luigi receive more character development in the Super Mario Bros. movie than they've had in any previous incarnation, even going so far as introducing their loud, large Italian-American family. Video game publications like The Gamer praised Chris Pratt and Charlie Day, who voiced the pair with vocal chemistry that feels like fireworks over a castle. Do you think I know every human being with a mustache wearing an identical outfit with a hat with the letter of his first name on it? <laughs> because I don't! That being said, Mario and Luigi spend the bulk of the Super Mario Bros. movie apart. Luigi is captured by Bowser's evil forces early on, placing him in the traditional damsel in distress role. Their conflict-free, supportive relationship in the film's opening drives Mario's desire to rescue Luigi throughout the film, but he still finds himself struggling to master the weird rules of the Mushroom Kingdom. During the film's climactic showdown with Bowser, a beaten-up Mario finds himself in the pizzeria from the film's opening. Watching the plumbing company commercial, he and Luigi spent all their money to make. He's reminded of how his brother makes him feel like a superhero, which goes back to his defense of Luigi as kids. It makes for a thrilling end to the film, as the two brothers work together to take on Bowser. In one of the film's first scenes, Mario and Luigi's pizzeria celebration is cut short by Foreman Spike, their former boss, who mocks their plumbing company and physically intimidates an overconfident Mario when he tries to defend his brother. As Luigi remarks during this scene, Mario is crazy to stand up to someone three times his size. His introduction to Princess Peach emphasizes this as she remarks about how small Mario is. Mario's lack of strength is a sore spot for the Brooklyn plumber, although he's given a chance to prove himself when King Cranky Kong demands that he fight his son, Donkey Kong. If he wins, Cranky will lend his army in defense of the Mushroom Kingdom. Ultimately, it's Mario's heroism and found confidence that not only wins over Donkey Kong in the end, but even Foreman Spike, who leads a crowd in Brooklyn cheering on the Mario Brothers. Luigi is Mario's cowardly brother, whose anxiety and fear are established early in the movie. An early moment that cements his personality occurs at a plumbing job gone wrong, where Luigi is attacked by a dog after he steps on its bone. However, this fear pales in comparison to Luigi's terror when he ends up sucked into the Darklands and separated from Mario. In a scene that will delight fans of Luigi's Mansion, Luigi abandons his flashlight to outrun a horde of dry bones ending up in a castle where he's ambushed by Shy Guys. In a later flashback, Luigi reminisces on his childhood years when Mario rescued a meek baby Luigi from a playground bully. By the time Luigi reunites with Mario during the film's third act, Luigi has found his courage while trying to save his brother for once. As Mario is about to be engulfed by Bowser's flames, Luigi defends him with a manhole cover. Then the two take the superstar for themselves and use it to defeat Bowser. Nevertheless, Luigi may find new reasons to be scared in the future, especially if Day lives up to his hope of wanting to do a Luigi's Mansion movie. Little is known about Peach from the Super Mario Bros. game series despite being playable in titles like Super Mario Bros. 2, Super Princess Peach, and Super Mario 3D World. For fans of Mario's frequent damsel in distress, the character gets a great opportunity to be fleshed out with her role in the Super Mario Bros. movie. In contrast to her more helpless video game appearances, Anya Taylor-Joy's Princess Peach is a full-blown fighter, but she wasn't always that way. There's a huge universe out there. During a scene in a fire flower field, Peach opens up to Mario about her past. She reveals that as a baby, she stumbled out of a green pipe into the Mushroom Kingdom, where she was taken in by the Toads. The cute citizens of the Mushroom Kingdom raised and crowned her as their princess when she came of age. In the film, this justifies Peach's determination to protect her people. However, Mario raises an important question. Is Peach from his world? Unfortunately, the question isn't answered, but it opens a lot of opportunities to explore Peach's backstory in a spin-off or sequel. Perhaps Peach's origins lie in Sarasaland, the home of Peach's counterpart, Princess Daisy. Peach, being from New York, could also be an interesting plot twist to connect the Mushroom Kingdom with Mario's home in Brooklyn. Keegan-Michael Key's Toad is a heartwarming presence in the Super Mario Bros. movie. Toad is Mario's first encounter when he ends up in the Mushroom Kingdom. For parts of the film's early scenes, Toad acts as a guide to Mario on his way to Princess Peach. However, we learn that he's not particularly unique in the Toad culture when he and Mario are denied access to Peach's castle by the Toad's standing guard there. 
However, Toad does manage to join Mario and Peach's journey to the Jungle Kingdom. He shows up after Mario and Peach depart, offering to protect her, and Peach gratefully accepts. Toad mainly rides in the backseat for the adventure, playing the role of comic relief. After Peach and the Kong Army's assault on Bowser's floating island fails, Peach and Toad return to the Mushroom Kingdom. Despite Peach insisting that he flee with the rest of the city, Toad chooses to stay and protect his princess as best he can. From that point on, Peach knows that he'll always be by her side. Donkey Kong's entrance in the Super Mario Bros. movie is one of the more energetic moments in the film, as a coliseum full of Kongs cheer on King Cranky Kong's beloved son. However, there's a clear history between Donkey Kong's showmanship in front of a crowd and Cranky Kong's acceptance of him. As DK begins to flex his pecs, Cranky Kong is visibly embarrassed. Furthermore, Donkey Kong takes moments during his fight with Mario to ask his father if he's watching him. When Mario ends up defeating Donkey Kong in combat, the embarrassment the gorilla suffers exposes just how desperately he seeks his father's approval. This leads to a rivalry between the two characters for much of the rest of the film. By the time Donkey Kong and Mario end up swallowed by a ma ray after the disaster on Rainbow Road, a clear parallel is drawn between their desperation to make their fathers proud. Fortunately, they both achieve that by the end of the movie. When Donkey Kong saves his father, he's encouraged to show off a little, and Mario's defeat of Bowser finally proves his courage and determination to his dad. Jack Black's performance as Bowser might be the best part of the Super Mario Bros. movie. Do you yield? <laughs> I do not. The monster first appears as a menacing tyrant hell-bent on destroying the Mushroom Kingdom, but halfway through the movie, it's revealed that Bowser's ultimate purpose isn't conquest, it's love. Even his own army is off-put by the idea that Bowser's main ambition is to marry Princess Peach despite the fact that she hates him. While this leads to some humorous sequences like Bowser practicing a serenade for Peach and then putting on a mock proposal with Kamek dressed as Peach, it also drives Bowser's furious hatred of Mario. Bowser sees the hero as his primary romantic rival. When Peach ends up ambushing Bowser and his army at the altar, Bowser angrily summons a bonsai bill to destroy the Mushroom Kingdom. Though Mario successfully deflects the giant bullet, he inadvertently sends it careening through a warp pipe back into Brooklyn. Everyone is sucked through the portal in the resulting blast, and Bowser almost defeats the plucky plumber on his home turf. Nevertheless, Bowser is no match for Mario and Luigi's teamwork. After defeating the fire-breathing turtle, Peach forces him to eat a blue mushroom, shrinking him down to a miniature size. Toad then traps the once-threatening baddie in a bottle. In a mid credit scene, we discover Bowser is being kept in a cage in the Mushroom Kingdom, with only his piano to keep him company. This means Bowser will be nearby for any future sequels. Brooklyn originated as the birthplace of Mario and Luigi in an unlikely title, the educational game Mario's Time Machine. The brothers' home was reinforced by official comic books, Nintendo Power Magazine, and the Super Mario Bros. Super Show. The New York borough has never made an official appearance in the video games, but it plays a big role in the opening of the Super Mario Bros. movie, depicting Mario and Luigi's struggling plumbing business and family life. The final scenes of the Super Mario Bros. movie takes the brothers' conflict with Bowser back through the green pipe and into Brooklyn. It's a moment where Mario and Luigi get a chance to prove themselves not just to Peach, Donkey Kong, and the rest, but to those who doubted them at home, like their parents and Foreman Spike. A sequel to the Super Mario Bros. movie could delve into the implications of this crossing of worlds. In the earlier scenes of the movie, Brooklyn was in mayhem after an underground sewage leak. This causes a flood in the city's streets and encourages Mario and Luigi to enter the sewers and discover the green warp pipe. If anything, it'd be great to get a better look at the city, which is riddled with Easter eggs, alluding to Nintendo's history as well as various entries in the Mario franchise. Audiences spend quite a bit of time in the Jungle Kingdom, as Peach, Mario, and Toad venture there to recruit the Kong army to defend the Mushroom Kingdom against Bowser's incoming forces. The Jungle Kingdom in the Super Mario Bros. movie isn't what gamers are used to from the Donkey Kong Country games. This Jungle Kingdom, for example, has roads fit for high-octane kart racing. But plenty of iconic Donkey Kong Country characters make cameos in the movie. Cranky Kong's overseeing the arena battle, plus we see Diddy Kong, Dixie Kong, Chunky Kong, and even Funky Kong. So a full-fledged Donkey Kong Country film isn't hard to imagine. In fact, rumors of Illumination giving Seth Rogen's Donkey Kong character his own spin-off have been circulating since 2021. The only thing left is for the Jungle Kingdom to be thrown into disarray by the arrival of King K. Rule. 
In the post credit scene, viewers are whisked away to the sewers of Brooklyn, the resting spot of an artifact left behind from the Mushroom Kingdom's crossover, a lone white egg with green spots. Super Mario Bros. fans know who's about to hatch from that egg — Yoshi, one of Mario's most famous allies. Mario's dinosaur pal first appeared in the Super Nintendo title Super Mario World, though the character's design dates back to the release of the original Super Mario Bros. in 1985. Yoshi later spawned a spin-off franchise with Yoshi's Island. We don't get to see that particular Yoshi in the Super Mario Bros. movie, but before the film finally cuts to black, the egg begins to crack, and we hear his iconic high-pitched call. Yahoo! Chris Pratt told CBR that the post credit scene gets him, quote, very, very excited about the prospect of doing another movie as Mario. Man, that guy must really love dinosaurs.